So after yesterday's sanity check that the ng template construct in Angular maintains lexical binding even with nested ng template instances, I want to perform a fun thought experiment in which we see if we can partially apply template variables to an ng template or a template ref. So for example, let's say that I have a template here that I want to use in an ng4 template. And you can see that it makes use of the iteration value and it also makes use of the index. These are two things that are provided by the ng4 directive. But then you can see it also makes use of these things arg2 and arg3, which are not provided by ng4. And if we jump all the way down to the bottom, we can see that what we're going to do is here's our ng4. We're going to loop over this foobar baz array. Here's our template, and we're going to pass in uh, an ng template reference or template ref, right? And it's going to provide that implicit value, which is foobar or baz, as well as the index value. So how do we get from something that applies just this to something that provides all four of these things? Well, we're going to start wrapping our ng templates using other ng templates and the ng template outlet directive. So here, you can see that we're, we're defining a partial template ref. It's going to take the two variables provided by ng4 and then the index uh, for arg2 and arg3. But internally, it's going to render the previous template, right? It's going to render ng4 template ref and it's going to provide a context object which is what then populates all of these values. But instead of just blindly passing through all of them, what you're going to see is we're actually going to hard code one of them. So we're going to partially apply this arg2 to the resultant template ref, such that when the template ref gets used, it will no longer need to provide arg2. Arg2 will be provided implicitly by this internal rendering. Then we're going to take this partial template ref and we're going to wrap it once again inside of another ng template. You'll see that this one doesn't take arg2 because arg2 is being implicitly provided by the previous template. And just as we did before, we're going to use the ng template outlet internally, provide a new context object, this time hard coding arg3, such that when we then eventually consume partial template ref2, we neither need to provide arg2 nor arg3, both of which have been hard coded and partially applied within these other ng templates. So at this point, what we're going to get is a resultant template which only needs to provide the implicit binding and the index binding, which brings us back to our ng4, which takes that partial template ref2, which is what we just created here. It's only going to provide the implicit and the index, and then arg3 is going to be implicitly applied through this template, and arg2 is going to be implicitly provided by this ng template, which allows us ultimately to use this ng template which takes two standard ng4 variables and two non-standard ng4 variables and use it within an ng4 loop. Now we could have combined this step and this step, right? We could have just hard-coded both values in the same place, but in order to make the exploration a little bit more interesting, I wanted to break it apart. Um, of course, we didn't even have to hard-code these. These could be some sort of lexically bound value, such as something coming out from another ng4 loop or an ngif or something to that effect, or any kind of other structural directive that uh, provides a variable binding to a template. And um, yeah, so this is, uh, I think, some mad science-y kind of stuff. I think it's fascinating, and I think it, it shows the flexibility and the power of the template references and the ng template construct, but I think it probably safely falls under the category of quote-unquote clever code and should probably be avoided, but uh, I think it's uh, it's an interesting mental model to keep in the back of your head.